Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through the setup and integration of the Outlook plugin. Uh, you'll need to register an application with Microsoft to grab some API keys or a couple of settings there. Um, and I'll walk you through a couple of uh, the data calls and actions so that you know how to make them work in your application. So the first thing you want to do is go to apps.dev.microsoft.com. So you'll need to log into a Microsoft account of some kind um, to access this section here. And once you're in, you'll create a new application. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And give your name uh, or give your application a name. So I'm going to do demo app for uh, plugin. And you can hit create. This is just an internal name for you. Once, if, once you've created your application, you will automatically get an application ID. So you can go ahead and copy this and paste this into the settings of the plugin in your Bubble app. So if you haven't already installed this plugin, um, go ahead and do that. This is a free plugin and you'll want to paste in your app ID into the app ID fields. And to generate the app secret, you'll want to come down here and generate a new password. This password is only going to display to be displayed to you once, so make sure you copy it now. You won't be able to get it again. You can always create other passwords, but just heads up that once you hit OK, you won't be able to see the full thing anymore. Um, and then that secret will go into the other fields here for secret. All right, so I'll hit OK. Again, if you feel like your um, password has ever been compromised, then you can delete the secret and generate a new one. The next thing you want to do is add a platform. You'll want to add a web platform, and that's going to allow you to enter in a redirect URL. The redirect URL is the page that your user is coming from, um, from your application. So on your page, you'll want to have a button that authorizes the user. So when they click on this button, they're going to be taken to Microsoft uh, to the login screen. They will authorize their account to be read by your application, um, and then they'll be automatically redirected back here. So Microsoft needs to know where are these users coming from and where should we send them back. And it's also a way of validating that the request is coming from an approved um, location. So this is the URL that you want to enter here. Normally you want to do um, whatever page it is that's triggering that authorization action. So I'm going to show you that action here real quick. When you click on this button, uh, the action is sign up, log in with the social network. Okay, and that's what I've got here. And with that action, depending on what other plugins you might have installed, you may have a list, but if you have the Outlook one installed, you'll just choose Outlook there. Um, so now Bubble will know, all right, we're going to authorize with Outlook, we're going to insert these keys, um, and we know to take them over to Microsoft. So depending on which page has this action, that's the URL that you want to insert here. However, I highly, highly recommend that you use a generic redirect URL, um, and you can do that by checking this box in the plugin settings here. Uh, to use this URL, uh, Bubble actually spells it out for you with your domain and then uh, these paths here. This is so that Bubble can, um, instead of sending like your index page or some other page where you're triggering this action, instead it'll send to Microsoft um, this generic URL uh, so that you don't have to worry about adding um, multiple versions of the URL in your uh, settings here. If you happen to have parameters in your URL, Microsoft actually doesn't allow that. So in order to keep parameters in your URL, in your URL, this is a really good uh, method to take. Um, and in general, it's a lot easier to manage because if you ever change the name of your pages, it just makes it a lot easier to keep updated uh, in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my um, redirect URL field here. So mine is coachingsandbox.bubbleapps.io. Yours might be your custom domain. And it's API 1.1 1 .1, uh, redirect OAuth, I believe. OAuth redirect. I had it the other way around. Make sure you get it right. OAuth redirect. I'm also going to go ahead and add the version test 
version for this URL here. So now I've got my live and my version test, and it doesn't matter what page I'm using to trigger that sign up action, um, this will cover it because I've added these blanket URLs um, to the settings and definitely make sure that you have this checked so that Bubble knows to send that URL instead. The next thing you want to do is go down to your Microsoft Graph permissions. Uh, you will auto you'll automatically have user.read in here. You want to go ahead and add another one. It's called files.read. Uh, this one, you can see that there's a ton of different scopes, but the ones that we need in order for the plugin to work is uh, user.read, which is already there, and files.read. So we'll hit OK to add those both. And then that's all you need to do. Now just save all of these settings at the bottom of the screen. It might take a couple of minutes for things to take effect, so um, if you're getting an error at any point, maybe make sure that you give it a few moments um, to update. So again, the checklist is you'll need to copy your ID, you'll need to create a secret, put those into your plugin settings here, make sure that this checkbox is checked in your generic redirect URL, um, add a web platform, and add that generic URL to this list um, here. Um, and it's a good idea to do the version test version and your live version. Um, if you're currently on a bubble hosted domain, that's totally fine. Just remember that when you do move to a custom domain, you will need to come back in here and add the custom domain versions um, of your URL. So instead of, you know, if your domain turns into mycoolapp.com, this you need to add that to uh, this list here. And then the final thing would be to add that files.read graph permissions and save everything. So I'm going to go ahead and test this out and we'll preview this page. So again, it doesn't matter whether I'm coming from you know, any page of my application. If I have parameters in the URL, I'm using a generic uh, redirect. So I'll click Sign Up with Outlook. And I'm taken to Microsoft's login page uh, and so that I can pick an account. So I'll pick this one. and I am brought back into the application. I don't see any errors, so I should have in my user list here, if I refresh the data, I should see my coaching bubble. I think it just popped in there. There we go. And there's the email address that I used um, with the account. Now, depending on, um, I was already logged into, uh, into Outlook and I had actually already ac given this application access. So um, when you are running through this on your end, uh, there might be a second step on the Microsoft um, permission side uh, when the user clicks this button that will present them with a list of permissions to approve and it'll say um, accept. I'm going to overlay this video with that screen so that you can see what that looks like. Um, but the user will see that as a second step before they're taken back to the app. That's a standard flow. I'm sure you've seen it with other networks as well. Now, in order to use the plugin, you have both actions and data calls. Okay, so all of the actions are available in your workflows. So let's say I have another button to create a calendar. Okay, so I'll start edit workflow for creating a new calendar. And if you go to plugins, you can see all of the Outlook actions here. Uh, and create a calendar, I'll select that one, and the only thing that uh, you need to insert is the name of the calendar. So depending on which action you use, you'll have different settings. For example, with event, you have a lot more stuff to fill out about the event, um, and there are placeholders in the field so that you know what type of value um, to type in there. All right, now for the data calls, uh, those would be retrieved with the get data from external API expression. So I'm going to add a text so that you can see where that is found. That's right here, get data from an external API. And you'll want to select your API provider. So if I type in Outlook just to filter this down, these are all of your data retrieval calls. So you can list email messages, folders, calendars, events. You can retrieve the logged in user uh, or sorry, the authorized user with the Outlook account. Uh, if you do that, you'll see you have fields for the user. You can get their user ID, their name, their job, their email. Um, and, and that just, it depends on what uh, data 
uh, call you're looking for. So if you want to retrieve a folder, um, you'll see the fields that are available to you are the ID of the folder, the name. Um, now to retrieve a specific folder, it's looking for uh, a folder ID. Uh, now where do you get that ID? The best way to retrieve IDs for any of these um, items that require them is to use a repeating group actually. So if we use add a repeating group here, and I want to display all of my folders um, from my account, you'll type in, well actually the, the better way to, to know what you need to select for type of content is to actually start with the data source. So if you go to get data again from an external API, and then do Outlook, and let's say we want to list all of our email folders, okay? Um, and then you want to, it has a couple of extra information, you really just want the value of that list. And so now you know the type of content needs to be list email folders, um, so you can start typing that in, list email folders value. It matches list email folders value here. Okay, and now each cell in this repeating group represents a different folder. So you can display the current cell's folders display name uh, or even the current cell's folders ID. Now this is how you would be able to store the ID to then later retrieve a single folder if you want to do that. Um, this is, just needs to happen in a workflow. You could have a button in the repeating group to do that. It really just depends on what you're doing. Um, but let's say, for example, you also want to run the action um, move message to a folder. So this just takes one email from one folder out of that folder into another folder. And you can see that what the plugin requires to make that happen is the ID of the message and the ID of the target folder, the folder that it's going to. So in order to retrieve these, you'll need to um, save the IDs. Uh, and if you want, you can add buttons here so that you can work with current cells folder ID or current cells message ID. Um, and configure your setup uh, and actions that way. But that's pretty much the setup. Uh, if you have any questions at all about getting this configured specifically for your application, just reach out and we can work through it together. But other than that, I hope this was very helpful. Thanks so much for watching.